Thanks, Harris. Hi, Wayne. How are things? Good, thank you. Yeah, good, good. Uh, just start off, could you explain, you've named the team a bit early, if you could explain the thinking about that and also any injuries and how they might have affected this week's selection and next week's, maybe particularly Aaron Wainwright, but maybe others too? Yeah, so um, with a few changes uh, and uh, a debutant coming in, what we wanted to do was name the team as early as possible in camp. And once we do that, it tends to get out anyway. So we're, we're just uh, going with it today, a couple of days earlier. Um, Injury-wise, yeah, Aaron, unfortunately, took a bump in the uh, the game last week against South Africa, and um, he's uh, on track to be uh, good to go for Australia. Obviously, that's a change in the back row. Tane Basham moving to number eight. He's having quite a series, isn't he? And Thomas Young coming in and Alice Jenkins as captain. Talking points in all three. Yeah, so it's not the biggest back row in the world, but what they are all good at is, is over the ball. So it'll give us something different. Um, you know, and the way Fiji play, uh, hopefully there may be a few opportunities, you know, at the breakdown. So certainly uh, we'll be strong in that area or stronger than we have been. Um, you know, obviously a bit of work to do on our line out with, uh, with those changes there. But Alice is, is the captain. He's a natural leader. He's, he's captain in the past. Uh, and when you look at the changes we've made, um, the seniority that uh, Jonathan Davies brings, obviously that's missing. Uh, so for us, it was a, uh, a natural go-to for, for Alice, to be honest. Uh, Dan Biggers, obviously running our game from 10. Adam Beard's calling the lineouts, and those are probably the other two senior players that uh, will have a lot of influence on the game. Tane as a, as a number eight, you're asking a lot of yeah. him in this autumn series, aren't you? Yeah, we are. But, um, you know, he's working really hard at his game. He's learning all the time. And I think... Um, you know, he, he took a lot out of last weekend in terms of learnings and decision-making of breakdowns and that sort of thing. So, look, he's going to be much better for the series uh, going forward. And it uh, just turned 22 years of age. That's exciting. Um, played a lot of his younger rugby at number eight prior to being converted to a seven. So, the number eight role he's, he's looking forward to. And Thomas Young, you asked for a special dispensation to pick him in the squad and obviously now starting again. Yeah, well... Um, you know, you know, with the, the opposition that we've got, you're going to take bumps along the way. And uh, with the injuries we've had to the loose forwards, um, you know, Thomas was always going to be involved should he be allowed to. And uh, that has been the case. And, and he'll get a, um, a start, which he's really relishing and looking forward to as well. You obviously had a look at Josh Adams at outside centre towards the end of uh, the South Africa game and liked what you saw, I presume, to pick him this week. Oh, we had a look right back in the Barbarians game, uh, to be honest. Uh, it's always been in the back of our minds that he has the, the skill set, the ability to play in more than one position. Obviously played well at fullback uh, on the Lions tour and, um, you know, at club level has played fullback and wing. And we just think uh, we want to see if he, if he can do it at this level. Obviously, there's a World Cup coming up and we're looking to build depth in all positions. And, you know, when you can only take 33 to a World Cup, having guys that can play in multiple positions is important. And Christ Trins are on the bench. He's an exciting prospect with an awful lot of international options. So nice to have him tied up. And apart from the obvious, what do you see in him as a, as a potential player? Well, at 19 years of age, um, he's an athlete. I think uh, if you saw him up close, he's, uh, he's going to be one to watch in the future. There's no doubt about it. And we want to get him into the fold um, nice and early, which is what we've done. Um, and it's going to be a great learning experience for him. He's trained well. He's very enthusiastic. Got 60 minutes for... Um, Exeter on the weekend, which, you know, has been beneficial for him um, in terms of the lungs. And look, um, he'll just enjoy the whole week and obviously the experience of playing in front of a big crowd as well. So, you know, he'll get some game time and uh, that's certainly what we're, we're, we're looking to do with him. And lastly for me, you've kept the pack basically the same, apart from obviously number eight of the backs. You've made five changes. Just what, what impact is that going to have in the overall game plan against Fiji? Yeah, some, some are forced. Look, we've got, um, I think there's about 17 players unavailable at the moment through injury. And, and uh, so, look, a lot of it is forced upon us, but um, it's also a, a great experience for players coming in and, and getting, you know, uh, games against Southern Hemisphere nations, which we, which are few and far between in the last couple of years, obviously. So it's valuable experience. We're building depth, and uh, I think that's going to bode well for the future. Thanks very much. Thank you. Hi, Wayne. Um, you've selected Alex Cuthbert's first international for four years. Um, can you just tell, tell us a little bit about the selection, please? You know, I think Alex has uh, gone well in the, in the Premiership. He's forced his way into a very strong side, played well um, back in last season. He's come in, look, he's big, he's quick, he, he, he's got a lot of repeatability in him, um, very, very fit. 
uh, and he's been um, obviously enjoying coming into camp and working uh, working hard and getting his volume up in training. So we think he's good to go to, to get a game. And, and again, we're, we're looking at, at, at depth and we want to have competition for positions. And we think that Alex can uh, can add to the depth that we've uh, that we're building. When Alex was sort of playing his last few games, uh, Wayne, he, he had quite a lot of abuse, social media. Do you sense now that he's back and he's hungry for international rugby and his time away has allowed him to sort of uh, get that sort of hunger back and he's in a good frame of mind to be playing? Yeah, I think a lot of players that, that, that go away come back different people. We, we've seen it. Reese Priestland was probably in a similar boat. You know, um, Dan Biggers enjoying being uh, playing in England. I don't, I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing. It's we just don't need too many of them out there. And uh, certainly having that experience and coming back, um, uh, you know, a, a better person, a better rugby player, if you like, uh, more experienced. I think um, is not necessarily a bad thing. But uh, certainly he's trained very, very well, um, and is very much so looking forward to the opportunity to play on the weekend. So we're looking forward to seeing how he goes. Fiji, Wayne, and a, an opposition you know well. What do you make of this current squad, given the challenges they've had, no Southern Hemisphere players, uh, a temporary coaching staff coming in? Yeah, look, um, in a way, my, my experience is that the best players are playing in the Northern Hemisphere. They're up here earning big money. So uh, they'll have a strong side. There's no doubt about that. Obviously, it's unfortunate that Vern can't come and, and one or two of the management staff. But look, um, since my time there, Fiji's come a long way and um, they've done very well. They're, they're a side which um, you know you, you can't rest against. The offloading game is is probably second to none. Um, the Fijians love uh, ball in hand, and they're very very skillful, very good at one handed offloads. Um, as we've seen in, in, in games this year, you saw them against the All Blacks. You know, with a solid scrum for for the majority of the game, and they got a, a you know a nice try through the driven lineout. So they've come a long way at the set piece. Um, and, uh, you know, a lot of the players are familiar to us from their, their rugby in the Northern Hemisphere. So we're expecting a, a big physical um, match from the Fijians. And uh, I know from my time here in 2005, I think we were beaten by a drop goal in the last minute. So look, the Fijians will come uh, knowing that they, they usually have uh, good close games with Wales. And the final one for me, um, Ken, Ken Owens, a long-term sort of prognosis. You've obviously released him from the squad. You hoped he might have been fit for Australia. Is it any more serious than, um, than that? Or would we expect to see him perhaps back before the end of the year? He'd definitely be back before the end of the year. You know, um, I'd like to think that uh, he'll get a, a number of club games in before the Six Nations. So um, it's just one of those ones where backs can be slow. Um, you know, we... <sighs> If we pushed it, what would we get out of it? You know, it's one game, whereas uh, it's a long season and we're, we're not too far for Rugby World Cup. So player well-being's uh, at the forefront of that decision. Hi, Wayne. Simon here. Hi, Simon. Um, I admit, um, in the week of the New Zealand game, you said that if uh, Willis Halaholo had been available, he would have been involved in that match. Um, yes. No, he's not involved. This, he's not involved this week. Is that a, a legacy of his illness, a lack of training time? What's the, what's the thoughts there? Yeah, de definitely. Um, Wallace was. Uh, we've had a run this morning. We have another one this afternoon. So he's back in full training. Um, it's just when you you're sort of stuck in a in a in a inside environment for ten days, these guys are, are finely tuned and you know just just ten days off. And will he, with the illness as well, it's not just the ten days off. It's the fact that he was ill. Um, and uh, it takes a, a few days to recover from a medical point of view, and then it's getting the volume back into his body. We don't want to risk him uh, this weekend, um, but he'll certainly be available for next weekend. Um, you're up against the kings of sevens rugby, and you've gone for three sevens in your back row. Uh, did you consider going for a bigger option there, be it a Seb Davis, a Chisuchunza, or even Shane Lewis Hughes? Was that an option? Yeah, we did discuss all of those options, um, and Seb is involved. Uh, we think he's improved over the two games, um, and so we're going to give him the same opportunity. Um, he'll be covering the loose forwards. Um, Chris can also cover the loose forwards. So uh, we've got the three guys out there. If something happens to a seven, we've got uh, we've got that cover already on the field. So um, the big men are ready to come on if need be. Lastly, for me, you talked about the scrum being the one area of disappointment last weekend. Have you got to the bottom of it? Was it just that you were up against an ex exceptional scrimmaging team or do you have more issues yourself? Uh, it's a combination of both. Uh, they are an exceptional scrummaging team. You're right. They've, um, they've had good success against uh, you know, the other top nations, uh, obviously in the rugby championship. 
but also there's work to be done on our side. I think we've come in undercooked. Um, you know, Wynne Jones uh, coming back from the Lions, you know, he knows he's he's got a bit of work to do to get uh, to the full fitness levels required to play at test level. Um, and you could argue that um, Thomas Francis is, is, by his own admissions, got some work to do as well. So, and with losing Ken in the middle of that, um, you know, the scrum has been weakened, uh, but it's certainly something the boys worked hard on this morning um, and they'll be working hard on it for the rest of the week. Cheers, Wayne. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Hi, Wayne. Uh, just one from you, if possible, regarding the, the scrum half position. You've obviously gone with, with Kieran. What's the, the thinking behind that? And how have you found the, the competition um, in camp with, with that role? Yeah, it, there is good competition um, in the nines. Very, very good. They're, just by nature, there's a lot of competition there. Um, but certainly, uh, Gareth's disappointed. He's not having a run this week. We had a good chat to Gareth. Um, but it was a, an opportunity for us to have a look at Kieran. Um, you know, he played very well against England in the Six Nations. And we need to see um, him repeat that, that sort of performance. And you can only do that by being put out there. We have, you know, Gareth's 60-odd test now. We, we pretty much know Gareth, what Gareth can and can't do. Uh, Thomas, we're wanting him to have a run of games. Uh, he's playing well. And, um, and Kieran needs an opportunity to get back out there. Uh, and we've decided this is a game to do that. Yes, Jeff. Hi, Wayne. It's Alex.